Okay, Break a Broke 23. Today, I am gonna show you folks how I refurbish or polish a dust cover for an old turntable, new or old, whatever. Um, but this is how I do it. And I wanna show you what this looks like first here before we tear into it. So the turntable that I bought is in another video, but it's a little denim turntable that I bought at a yard sale for five bucks. The lady's house was immaculate inside and um, the turntable was actually stored out in the garage for many, many years, she said, but that's why I felt like it was okay to buy this turntable because when I see somebody that has a really nice house and stuff and I'm at a yard sale, I have no problem with buying their stuff because they usually maintain it very well. That's why I'm even saying that. So here's the deal. This doesn't look very good. So what I've done is I've washed it with a, a hot soapy rag with mild soap and it still has this uh, corroded oxidized effect to it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, fix this up and make it look hopefully new again. Here's what I use. This is my weapon of choice. This is the Meguiar's Scratch 2.0. This is uh, basically somewhat of a pumice based um, polish here so it's very very uh, gritty in the fact that, that it's you know like micron grip if you ever held a bar of lava soap this isn't that gritty but um, this is what's going to shine it and get it done so um, yeah let's start on that a um, couple things I like to use I, I always do this by hand um, I don't believe in polishers, I believe in elbow grease. So what I usually use is a terry cloth towel and because um, what it does is it absorbs a lot of this polish and it holds a lot in because I want to have a lot on this towel. The more of the polish material you have on here, the, the better of a job you're gonna get and you don't have to keep um, reapplying more. So I actually do this quite liberally. So let's kind of get started on it. I use a cotton shirt, an old t-shirt usually, a clean cotton shirt to uh, do all the uh, final um, cleanup, the final buffing. So what I will do is give it a shake. I don't remember if I stored it upside down or on the, on the lid like you're supposed to. I love this stuff. I think I paid hmm, six, seven dollars for that bottle and my terry cloth towel I'm using is a little bigger than I normally use. I usually like to use like a little washcloth. So I'll shake this up and you can do this a couple ways. I just kind of put it out there and go like this. Um, manual, manual labor, elbow grease, that's the way to do it. You know, that's really the way to do it. I'll usually put like a newspaper down or something, but just because my lighting is kind of crappy today we're just gonna kind of do it this way and I want it like this I want all this material out here I want this stuff to do the work yes I'm rubbing on it and, and I'm using a little bit of elbow grease on it but I'm letting the actual material the actual scratch out compound do all of the work and I'll usually do that oh until it starts going from like a white color to kind of like maybe a dirty darker color and I put a little bit too much on but that's okay that's okay I want to I want to use the abrasive materials inside to do the work you know you could use a hand polisher there's a lot of guys out there that would use a polisher or some sort of an orbital tool or something like that but the problem is is you will if you're not experienced with that tool you could burn the plastic itself, you could heat it up, kind of burn it. Um, you could leave swirls in because you're getting too crazy with it, you know? But, uh, so I always like to do it by hand. This is really the, the way to do it. I'm in no hurry at all. You know, some people get impatient and want to hurry up the project, but then you don't get good results. So, I'm gonna go over here and do the sides, but uh, I'm gonna do that kind of last. What I wanna do is I wanna see what kind of progress I'm making on this. So we're gonna flip the rag over here and go to a dry part and then start 
getting the material. Ah, I like putting paper underneath there. Let me see. Let me get this shirt here. There we go. And so I'll just kind of go around and get a layer of that stuff off. And then I'll kind of do this edge here just to get the get all that off of there just so I don't spread it around. I just I'm not sure where I'm at in this process at the moment. So I'm not sure what my results are gonna be. So I'll do this in a couple coats. Obviously I'm not gonna get it all in one, but we'll see. All right, so let's find another dry spot here on the old terry cloth. And then once I start getting this film off, as you can see, this film's kind of going away. That is where I'm gonna break out the soft cotton shirt. So let's see if we're making any progress on this. Cause this is what's gonna really let us get an idea of where we're going here with this. That's starting to look pretty good, huh? Look at that. We're not there yet. I'm gonna have fingerprints from the underside and all of that, but so I don't know how it's gonna show up on camera. And because I've got trace amounts over here on the back and stuff, you know, it's gonna maybe cloud up. I should probably clean this up a little bit. This is clean dirt, you know, this isn't greasy or anything like that, so. If we make a little bit of a mess, it's no big deal. It's easy cleanup, right? On our work surface, whether they are doing this in the kitchen or whatever, hell, maybe your countertop will get a little shine going on there. But let's see how it's going here. Oh, I think it's starting to look pretty good. Flip that over. Okay, cool. I'm not going to bore you guys with a huge process and I'm still searching on this shirt for a, a nice dry spot here so I don't keep spreading the material you know around but uh, I got some fingerprints inside there but let's take a quick look let's see what we've done so we've gone we've gone to this and that's pretty darn awesome look at that sweet this is this turntable is gonna gonna be really nice it's going to come out real nice but you know i checked all modes and functions on the turntable made sure it was actually worth doing this if the turntable didn't work i probably wouldn't do it well you know what maybe i would maybe i'd ebay this there may be somebody out there with one of these with uh like a cigarette burn in it or something i mean i see them pretty sketchy all the time and you know this would this would be okay to sell for 10 15 bucks look how nice that turned out that was one application. So I am going to hit it again and I won't bother you with the camera work because we've already seen how this goes but uh, I'm gonna hit this one more time just for giggles and we'll see if we can get it to look any better but I'm pretty happy with this. I could almost leave it alone but in Breaker Broke 23 fashion I have to continue. It can get better. This is why I do it by hand. I have left no swirl marks in here. I did not heat up that uh, scratch owl or the scratch out. I did not heat that up. You saw this, it took me what, a minute, two minutes to do this. Just a little bit of elbow grease, guys. Don't use power tools, it's not necessary. If you had big deep gouges or scratches, maybe, but I would still uh, do a little patch, put a lot of material on, and just keep working that in and keep working it in. I also re, um, redo faceplates for CB radios and home stereos like this as well. So, okay. Anyway, um, I will make another application and I'll show you what that looks like, and I think we'll wrap this video up. Okay, guys, so I've got this finished up. It took two applications. It turned out pretty good. I actually did the underneath side as well. It's got that nice clean finish to it. There is a little scratched area right here. I could probably buff that out just a little bit more, but I'm liking that. That looks pretty darn good. So that's how I clean these up. 
I don't think this was from a smoker's environment or anything like that, but when I did clean the inside, I usually save this to almost the last, but uh, this did have a bunch of film in there, so I don't really know. It didn't smell, you know, our house didn't see, it seemed pretty clean, not like a smoker's home or anything, but maybe at one time it was in a smoker's environment. But the, uh, the scratch out takes care of all that. You know, so like I said, I went over this first with uh, a mild soap and water and um, then I dried it up then I put a couple coats of this on and apply it pretty liberally and there you go now I've been handling it a lot um, so I've got some fingerprints in it now but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another clean cotton t-shirt because if there's any contaminant from the scratch out on there or any part of that on there, it'll start working back in there. You'll kind of be chasing your tail because you'll see haze, you'll get rid of it, then you'll have haze somewhere else because you've got a shirt that's got material in it. So grab another cotton shirt or a nice cotton pad. I don't know, I've never tried microfiber or anything like that because I just don't believe in that. I just want to do this on the cheap, but I'm getting good results. Okay, so that's how I clean up a, uh, a dust cover for an old vintage turntable. Thanks for watching. Please leave comments below, uh, questions as well. I'll try to get to them as quickly as I can. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for watching.